start off, trace your front bodice on a piece of paper and make two copies. The right side is for the buttonhole side and the left side is for the button side. So in here I have two buttons. I am going to measure out the buttons to get the width or diameter. We need to get the diameter to determine the width of our extensions. The width of the fabric extending past the center front is equal to the width or diameter of your chosen button. Once you've measured out the width or diameter of the button, mark out this measurement from the center front for the extension. And square in the lines. Do this on both right and left patterns. For the first buttonhole and button marks, it should be set below the neckline with a distance same with the width or diameter of your button, plus 2 eighths of an inch or 0.6 centimeter. After the first buttonhole, divide the remaining space until the waist by 6 or 4. I am going to use this measurement to mark the remaining buttonholes. By the way, it is not necessary to place the buttonhole exactly at the bust line. It could be 3 eighths of an inch or 1 centimeter below the bust line or 3 eighths of an inch or 1 centimeter above the bust line. Either way, it's accurate. And by the way, buttonholes should start 1 eighth of an inch or 0.3 centimeter past the center front into the extension. From center front at buttonhole marks, mark out 1 eighth of an inch or 0.3 centimeter as shown. Next, get your button and measure out the thickness and record. And from the 1 eighth of an inch mark from center front, Mark out the width of the buttonhole plus the width of an inch or 0.6 cm from the button thickness. For sewing demonstrations, I've prepared two panels that will represent the self and the facing. I've also prepared three patches for the lips or welts for the buttonholes that we will use for later. At the wrong side of my panels, I will draw in the allowance, extension, and buttonhole marks. First, I will mark in my sewing allowance and square in a line like so. And mark in the extension from the sewing allowance line like so, like what we did on our patterns. And mark in the buttonholes like what we did on our patterns. And mark out 1 eighth of an inch or 0.3 cm past the center front. And mark in the width of the buttonholes. Next, square in vertical lines from the buttonhole markings like so. And draw the same lines and markings for the facing side. I've also extended the buttonhole with markings passing through center front and extension. Next, sew in basting stitches to make the lines visible at the right side of the fabric. For the basting stitches, I've used the bigger stitches from my machine. And create basting stitches for the buttonhole weave as well and extend the stitch line as shown.
So the stitches look like this on the right side of the fabric. Next, fold the patches vertically and mark in and square in a line like so. And fold again, this time horizontally, and mark in and square in a line like so, creating perpendicular lines. From the horizontal line, mark in the width of your buttonhole. Next, mark up and mark down to width of an inch or 0.6 cm respectively for the opening of the buttonhole. This rectangular shape will be the opening for our buttonholes. At the right side of the cell fabric, place the patch right on top of it and make it sure both fabrics are facing right side to right side. And next, match the buttonhole lines and pin from point to point like so. Once you've pinned the patches, it is time to sew them in place. To sew the patches, start stitching near the middle line and avoid starting your stitches at the corners. And do not back tap. When you have reached the corners, don't forget to lift up your presser foot and pivot. And keep on doing this for each corners and slow down your speed to avoid mistakes. When you are about to reach the beginning of your stitch line, make some few stitches passing through and do not back tack. And I am going to do the same procedure to the rest of the patches. By the way, I have used the second to the smallest stitch line from my sewing machine while sewing in the patches. Next, from the two corners of the rectangular opening, I will draw in triangular shapes into the middle line. Next, I will cut through the middle line and the triangular shapes like so. First, fold in the middle line and cut through. And carefully snip through the triangular shapes and don't snip beyond the stitch lines. And I'll do the same procedure to the rest of my patches. Next, push all of the patches inside in preparation for pressing. And I'll press open the small rectangular seams inside to lay it flat. And again, press the patch open to lay it all flat. And I'll do the same pressing steps to the rest of the patches. Next, mark up the weights of an inch or 0.6 cm from the opening. This represents the middle line. And next, fold the remaining fabric right exactly at the middle marks. And give the fold a press. This is the first lip or weld of the buttonhole. And pin the lip in place. And do the same procedure for the bottom part and pin everything in place. And do the same fold and press steps for the remaining buttonholes or patches. After pressing, gently bring the lips together using loose hand stitches to temporarily hold them in place. And sew the lips near the seams by hand. By the way guys, you don't have to make the stitches perfect.
Next, let's sew to secure the triangular seams and the rectangular seams from the inside. Before sewing, change your presser foot from a regular one to a single presser foot. And first, sew the triangular seams following the crease and stitch lines. And continue sewing the triangular seams on each buttonhole. Do the same sewing steps to the rectangular seams. And this is how the buttonholes look like from the front side. Next, cut out the excess of the patches and shape it the way you want it to. After that, I'm going to sew each patches to the self using a prick stitch. At the wrong side of the facing, I drew out the opening of the buttonhole. Later, I will sew these lines. I've also prepared transparent patches for the facing buttonhole. Next, I'm going to do some basting stitches at the opening of the buttonholes. I'll use these stitches as my guideline to sew in the patches. I will place the transparent patches on top of the facing at the right side. And using the basting stitch lines as my guideline, I will sew in the patches accordingly. And draw in the triangular shapes like what we did earlier. And carefully snip the middle lines and the triangular shapes. And press the patches like so. The buttonholes for the facing side should look like this. A rectangular shaped hole. Next, face the self and the facing right side to right side together. Match the middle lines and pin everything in place. And sew the facing and the self together according to your sewing allowance. Later, give it a press. And next, I'll fold the facing and self facing each other wrong side to wrong side. And pin the facing onto the self in preparation for hand sewing. Match the holes of the facing side to the stitch lines of the lips from the self side. And sew the holes of the facing side onto the lips using a prick stitch. And lastly, do the same hand sewing procedure to the rest of the buttonholes. And voila, so this is the finished product. Anyway guys, I hope this tutorial gave you enough tips on how to properly locate the buttonholes and how to sew the bound buttonholes. This type of buttonhole is perfect for your tailored jacket, vests, coats, and so much more. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to comment down below and I will reply as soon as possible. And if you're not subscribed yet to my YouTube channel, La Modeliste, make it sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, give it a huge thumbs up. And I will see you guys again on the next tutorial. A bientôt!